Hi, I'm State Senator Hoon Young Hopgood, and welcome to another edition of the Hopgood Hour, my monthly cable show that brings the people of the 8th District news and views from Lansing. As always, please feel free to contact me with any concerns or questions that you have regarding state government. Please feel free to, to email me or write me or give me a phone call uh, with any of those concerns, and we'll do our best to try to help you out. Um, today's topic is college uh, affordability and access to college and things that um, will help our young people uh, get a good start in life. And I'm pleased to be joined by Brandy Johnson, the Executive Director of the Michigan College Access Network. Uh, welcome to today's show, Brandy. Thank you, Senator Hopgood. And, and uh, we appreciate you coming and giving um, our viewers some information uh, about this topic. I think it's a very important topic. Um, could you just start off by just telling us a little bit about yourself and, and your work with the Michigan College Access Network? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I've been with the organization for a little over two years. We were organized uh, as a result of a federal grant called the College Access Challenge Grant that the state of Michigan was lucky enough to receive. And we used that grant to really incubate and ultimately launch the Michigan College Access Network. Our mission is to dramatically increase Michigan's college participation rate, particularly among low-income students, first-generation students, and students of color. And we've set an aggressive goal um, that Governor Snyder has adopted to increase our state's educational attainment rate to 60% by the year 2025, meaning 60% of Michigan working age adults having a post-secondary degree or valuable post-secondary credential by the year 2025. And we'll, we'll really need that to meet the labor market demands of, of the state. We are here based in Lansing, and we work on advocacy issues, leadership, professional development of high school counselors and other community-based college advisors. We help communities organize around increasing their educational attainment rate. Uh, we provide some resources directly to students through statewide initiatives, and we identify high-quality partner initiatives and help them to scale up in our target communities. Well, that's a lot to talk about. We'll, we'll get to um, some of those different uh, things that you guys do and, and look forward to that topic. Where are we now in terms of how, how many of our adults have some, some college? Or Yeah, that's a great question. About 36% of our working age adults age 25 to 64 have at least an associate degree. So an associate degree, a bachelor's degree, or some sort of an advanced degree. The government doesn't do a great job of tracking how many additional students have some sort of valuable post-secondary credential, which are absolutely necessary in our labor market. So things like professional certifications for welders or uh, certain health prof healthcare professions like x-ray technicians and phlebotomists. Sometimes people in those fields need some sort of post-secondary or technical or professional certificate, but not necessarily a college degree. And those, those are absolutely college. So when you add in those folks, we estimate around 11% of people in Michigan have a post-secondary certificate as, uh, as their terminal degree. So when you put those together, we estimate that Michigan is right around 47% or so. Um, and again, we're striving for a goal of 60% by 2025. The Center for Education and Workforce at Georgetown University estimates that 62% of Michigan adults will require post-secondary education or training for Michigan jobs by the year 2018. Uh, so we really need to ramp up our educational attainment rates in order to meet the employer demands of our state. Now, the, the world has changed, hasn't it? Absolutely. Hasn't. Forty years ago, in our parents' and grandparents' generation, you absolutely did not need a post-secondary degree or credential in order to compete in the labor market to enjoy a middle-class lifestyle, and that's just simply not the reality that we live in anymore. In the 21st century, a high school diploma is simply not enough to compete in, in our economy, and that's true even for Michigan. Uh, 
I hear manufacturers and employers of technical based trades tell me all the time that 40 years ago they could hire someone with a high school diploma and come to, to work on the line, but that's not the case anymore. Things have become so high tech that you need some sort of skill set beyond a high school diploma to be, to be hired. Where does that 60% come from? The 60% goal was originally created by Lumina Foundation for Education, which is the country's largest foundation dedicated to higher education philanthropy. They fund college access and success work. And so they set the goal originally to rally the country around increasing our country's educational attainment rate. Uh, attainment rate. It's also pretty well aligned with President Obama's goal, which is to double the number of Americans with a college degree by 2020 and ultimately regain the United States' prominence as the most well-educated country in the world. Again, a couple of decades ago, no one could really hold a candle to the United States in terms of the rate at which our young people were getting post-secondary training. Uh, since then, the United States has slipped to 15th or 16th in the world amongst other developed countries, and countries like Korea and Japan and Canada have really surpassed America, um, particularly when you look at the 25 to 34 uh, age bracket. America hasn't seen any progress. Forty years ago, about 40 percent of Americans had a college degree, and today about 40 percent of Americans have a, a college degree. And for the first time in American history, my generation is probably going to be less well-educated than my parents' generation. And that just rarely happens in a uh, developing democracy uh, like the United States. So. Uh, it's, it's certainly a priority, and the Lumina Foundation, the Gates Foundation, and the Kresge Foundation, which is headquartered right here in Michigan, uh, have, have set this as a priority, as has the White House and, and Secretary of Education, Arne Duncan. So other s countries have uh, placed a, 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 an emphasis on uh, college education and, and post-high school. Um, that's what's led to some of their growth in, in terms of, of those rates? Yeah, absolutely. It's just an expectation that their young people uh, go to college or some sort of post-secondary training after high school. It's in the water. It's, it's really in the culture that there's that expectation. And that's something that we could really improve on here in Michigan and, and throughout the country to really build a college-going culture. Uh, and that's something that, that MCAN strives to do every day. So in the United States has, has kind of held steady or kind of uh, been flat in terms of um, the, the, the coming generations? Exactly. And, and Michigan, unfortunately, is below the national average. We are um, every year right around the 32nd or the 33rd most well-educated state in the country. So Michigan's below the national average and, and the country's lagging behind the world. And so it's an issue that we really need to create priorities around. So Michigan's an ideal place to, to receive this um, the grant. Uh, you yeah. said it was a federal grant and, and to really engage in this efforts. Yeah, absolutely. And the appetite is is here. I go to communities across the state and it's really become a rallying cry around communities that in order to sustain a vibrant economy in our Michigan um, communities and ultimately support a really strong and healthy community, we have to increase our post-secondary educational attainment rate. It, it's good to hear, and, and um, because there is that sense out there that um, some some people don't place as much of an emphasis on, on higher education. So when you kind of go out there and give a message and, and maybe give some resources, uh, you're met with some uh, support and, and yeah. positive feedback. A lot of support, and and really the the only uh, pushback that we sometimes get is that. Not everyone should go to college, but at that point we really need to reach a common definition of what college, when people close their eyes and think of college, they think of you know, beautiful campuses like you know, down the corner at Michigan State or at U of M in Ann Arbor, and that's one example of college. 
but college is really any post-secondary educational attainment, which includes technical and trade schools, our wonderful community colleges, and our public and private universities. And so once we talk more about college as a easy seven-letter word to say what we really mean, which is post-secondary educational attainment or something beyond high school, there's really a great consensus around leaders in this state, K-12 leaders, higher ed, business, philanthropy, the corporate sector, the nonprofit sector. There's, there's really great consensus that uh, all of our students need to pursue training beyond high school. So, so the culture is changing. Yeah, even I've been working in this field for about four years or so in Michigan, and I can, I can feel it changing even in that short period of time. Great. Um, now talk to about some of the activities or things that you guys do kind of that are Lansing based or, or you know kind of headquarter based. Um. Yeah, so we have a couple of statewide initiatives and these are great resources that your constituents and, and students and families in Southeast Michigan can take advantage of. Uh, one is the Know How to Go campaign. We coordinate a statewide public awareness campaign called knowhowtogo.org and we are part of a national consortium of states that have committed to running this public awareness campaign. And really the message behind the campaign is that you have what it takes to go to college, but there are some actual steps that you need to take to get there. Let's do those together. And it breaks, the Know How to Go campaign breaks it down to four easy steps that students need to, to do to go to college. One, be a pain in the behind and tell all of your adults in your lives that you want to go to college. Tell your coaches, tell your pastor, tell your counselor at school, tell everyone that you wanna to go to college and that you need help getting there. So find a mentor. Step two is to really push yourself and prepare yourself for college by taking college prep curriculum, things like Algebra II, Biology, Foreign Languages. Take the tough courses now in high school so that when you get to college, those same sorts of courses are easier. Step three is to find the right fit, and that's really the college exploration process. Uh, whether it's a community college or a university, close to home, far from home, public, private, find the program and the major and the institution that's right for you. Uh, and then lastly, step four is to put your hands on some cash. There is absolutely financial aid available for students to attend college, but you need to apply for it and get your hands on it. So things like completing the FAFSA. So from here in Lansing, we coordinate a public awareness campaign, TV, radio, PSAs. We've had millions of dollars of uh, broadcasting space, so billboard space, TV and radio space donated by really generous broadcasters in Michigan. We don't pay a dime for the ads and those broadcasters recognize what an important message this is in Michigan and so donate the PSAs uh, throughout the state. And then we also really uh, mobilize local leaders to take advantage of the campaign by helping their students get on knowhowtogo.org to put collateral materials like bracelets and t-shirts in the hands of students to really encourage them to get invested in the Know How to Go uh, campaign. We also coordinate an event called Michigan College Application Week, which is a, a week that this year in 2012 will start on October 29th and it's a whole week dedicated to the college application uh, process. We have at least 90 high schools throughout Michigan that have uh, stepped up to be a part of the week, including Romulus High School, Wayne Memorial High School, Allen Park High School, Trillium Academy, all in your district, that have said that they wanna be a part of, of this week. And it's a, it's a school spirit week where it's college, college, college. The teachers will all wear their college sweatshirts and every single senior will uh, be given support to help fill out at least one college application during the school day, during the school week. So we're really excited about that. And then lastly, we support a resource called Michigan Cap, which is the Michigan College Access Portal. It's a one-stop shop, web-based service, completely free to students and families that help them plan, apply, and pay for college. It's located at michigancap.org. Uh, students can get personalized tools, compare college costs side by side, learn how to apply for grant and aid, 
uh, do career exploration exercises so that they can find a career and then figure out what sort of post-secondary degree or credential would be needed to enter that career. It's just a phenomenal resource and like I said, completely free for students and, and families to use and, and really makes the college going process very user friendly. So now you, you talked a lot of information in, in a, um, a, a week, you know, in, in the fall where you support people who are, are trying to apply for college and things like that. When should, all, when, when should people start thinking about these, sort, these sorts of things? And when should adults sort of be maybe nudging the, the, the young people in their lives um, about some of this stuff? Well, you can't stop early enough, but then it's also not too late. Uh, we had a great superintendent in Muskegon County who came up with an idea that we're trying to just spread all over the state that when, st when parents come to sign their kids up for kindergarten during kindergarten roundup to ask the, the parents, where do you see your go kid going to college in 12 or 13 years? Um, so they may say MSU or, or Western or Albion or Marygrove. Uh, and then revisit that question every single year. So it just becomes an expectation of, of students. There's also lots of things that parents can do, like start college savings plans. Michigan uh, has a number of great programs to help parents uh, with that. But students should really uh, start thinking seriously about college as they're entering high school, uh, because that's when they really start taking the courses that will set them up academically for success when they get to college. Um, so in seventh and eighth grade, students create educational development plans where they start to have a career goal and then a course taking pattern in high school uh, that aligns with that career goal and ultimately their post-secondary goal. So that's a really good time to start thinking about your college trajectory as you're entering eighth and ninth grade. Uh, in 11th grade uh, is when all of our students take the ACT as part of the Michigan Merit Exam. So 11th grade is w a really great time to, to focus on test prep. On michigancap.org we have a number of free ACT prep resources to help students get ready for the test and, and to do well on it. Um, the summer between your junior and senior year is a great time to again find the right fit explore different colleges and universities and start creating a list of ones that you you want to apply for. Um, and then in the, the spring of your senior year is when you can really gear up for financial aid season. Make sure you get your FAFSA in, um, which is the free application for federal student aid. Uh, that's how students qualify for valuable Pell Grant resources and other types of student loans and grants and work study. Uh, and it's a great time to apply for other scholarships to help make uh, the, the college going experience a lot more affordable for students and families. So if you spread it out a little bit and, and, and put some work into it, 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 you can really get through it. And yeah, and it will make the transition <clears throat> really smooth. Um, now you work with a number of communities mm -hmm. and you mentioned some schools and in, in, um, um, some in the area. What, what is their role and how, how do you work with them? Yeah, that's a great question. We have a fantastic uh, local college access network or LCAN in the Romulus area called Project ACE, which stands for Access to College for Everyone. And it's a consortium of leaders in the community that have really dedicated to increase the college going rate in, in the region. Uh, so we provide them technical assistance and professional development to help them do a better, more effective and intentional job of working with their students. A great example of something they do is, um, right in Wayne, uh, is host College Goal Sunday, which is an event held every February. It's a free event where students and families can come and get hands-on assistance in filling out that federal FAFSA form, which can be a little cumbersome and a little complicated. Um, so we have some financial aid experts that volunteer their time on College Goal Sunday to help students fill out the FAFSA. Uh, another one of the resources that we're incredibly excited about this year 
uh, is the National College Advising Corps program. MCAN supports one of our, our partners in the National College Advising Corps, which is really similar to Teach for America, but for college advisors. So we hire recent college graduates that have graduated from U of M and MSU to serve as full-time college advisors in high schools. And this year we are beyond thrilled to be placing a full-time college advisor at Romulus High School. So uh, a young woman named Danielle who just graduated from MSU is about to, to start at Romulus High School as a full-time advisor to supplement the work of guidance counselors but to do nothing but work with juniors and seniors on the college going process. Uh, we have about 35 advisors through that are going to be placed throughout the, the state, but we're really excited to be, this will be the first year in Romulus High School, and, and we're really thrilled about it. Oh, that's great. And then, yeah, obviously the, the, the local component is important because that's where the most people are, and that's yeah. where they're kind of touching the, the um, young people on a pretty, you know, day-to-day -day basis, um, um, especially during the school year, of course. Yeah, and, absolutely. Um, that, that's a great uh, piece to it. and. Uh, what, what are, I, I guess, some of the um, uh, things that you run across, uh, that your organization runs across that um, is, I guess, quickly addressed or most easily helps a young person um, uh, get into to college, something that, you know, maybe uh, prevents them but is, is common, but, yeah. you, you know, you, you guys can, I, I guess, easily just address and... Um, One of the things that we come across a lot is about the misperception of cost of college. Sometimes we'll ask a young person, how much do you think college will cost? And they honestly say a million dollars. If my parents aren't millionaires, then I just can't afford college. And that's just simply not the case. We have uh, a lot of generous financial aid programs federally and then also through local uh, uh, foundations like the Community Foundation for Southeastern Michigan offers a ton of scholarships to students. There's a lot of institutional aid that colleges and universities dedicate to, to students. So uh, college is affordable. Uh, community college is an incredibly affordable option. On average, community college costs around only $2,500 a year for tuition, um, which is just a, a really affordable option, especially for students that, that qualify for the Pell Grant. But the only way to unlock the Pell Grant is by doing that FAFSA. So we really, really push students to, to fill out the FAFSA. For our highest need students, they can qualify for a Pell Grant of $5,550, which is well beyond uh, how much it would cost to attend community college. And you can package the Pell Grant with other types of aid to pay for more expensive institutions, um, including our public and private universities. So I would tell students to, to not overestimate how much college costs. There's really affordable student loans available through the Direct Loan Program, uh, which is a program of the U.S. Department of Education, reasonable loan repayment programs um, that are